to welcome you to this session of counseling, teaching, and songs of praise. We are in this Refuge TV. And I've been carrying out a series of teaching about changing others as a source of stress. And we have been trying to answer a number of questions concerning toxic relationships. We have been saying that it is uh, not possible for us to be immune. We have been saying that no one is immune to these toxic relationships because we have been saying that toxic people are found in our societies, they are found in our families, they are found in our working places, they are found in our churches. Toxic people are everywhere. They are God's creations and they are everywhere that we go in life. So no one is immune. The question is, how do we live with these people? How do we live with them? And these are the issues we have been discussing for a number of weeks now. Today, we are in Changing Others, part five. We have done part one to four, and today we are in part five. And we are asking ourselves today, why toxic relationships are so destructive? Toxic relationships, they leave people broken. They leave broken hearts. They leave people frustrated. They leave people devastated. Yes, that is what toxic relationships do. They leave you living, I mean, uh, feeling useless and feeling like you have come to the end of the world. You are left wondering what is good and what is not good. What is love and what is not love. And so today we are asking ourselves why they are so destructive. And I would like us to be read by the word of God from uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12, which says, Therefore, whatever you desire, for man to do to you, you shall also do to them, for this is the law and the prophets. The law says that whatever you give comes back to you. My viewer, I want to say this, whatever you do in this world, it is possible that it shall also be done to you. Yeah. Because if you hurt people, you will also be hurt. If you love people, it will attract love. Love will attract love. And we are saying that the reason why toxic relationships are very destructive is because in a normal life, in a normal relationship, if you give love, you expect to receive love. But in a toxic relationship, if you give love, then you receive the opposite. And that is why we are saying that it is very, very destructive. When you give love, you receive the opposite. Okay? And what is this opposite? You give love, you receive hurting. Okay? You are hurt in that particular relationship. You give love, you receive devastation. Okay? You give love, you receive something that is terrifying. You receive worry, a lot of worry, something that is worry. You receive diminishing, you receive destructive response okay that is why whenever you try to give love it is now the response is the opposite you are hurt you are disbastated you are full of worry you are terrified 
you are diminished diminished meaning that you are made to feel very small you are made to feel very useless and at the end of the day these kind of feelings they leave you distracted destroyed they leave you destroyed so we are saying this help the people welcome support for others you know people who are healthy in mind people who are healthy in mind they are people who will welcome support for others they will welcome growth they will support what i mean is that they will support other people they will support their growth they will support success of other people they will be happy if you share with a person who is healthy in mind about something that you are doing and that you are succeeding they will be very happy about you they will glorify god they will praise you they will encourage you to continue okay so you will feel so encouraged you will feel strengthened by their comments about your success but these people that uh, we are talking about uh, the unhealthy people or toxic people they will not welcome any success any feeling of success from other people it will be a problem for them any blessing for other people it will be a problem for them any uplifting for other people it will be a problem for them and that is why you find if for example you are married by a toxic man whenever you say you want to increase your education they will be the first to tell you you cannot go back to school there are so many things to be done the education you have is enough if you tell them you want to begin a, a business you want to do a b c d whatever you come up with as a wife it will be shut down nothing will be encouraged that will include your growth okay the same case if you are married to a toxic woman whenever you come home excited and you share about the way god has blessed you the way god has opened a door or you even share the plans of how you want to extend a business how you want to uh, to to do things that will bring growth in your life they will they will discourage you they will discourage you they will say that you, they don't want you to grow they don't want you to be uplifted okay for their own selfish need they just want to stay in fact i remember there was a time i was sharing with a, a young man who was married and he was telling me in fact i wanted to give him a job and then he was telling me it will be unlikely that he'll take that job and then i asked him why why he told me the kind of wife he had is a wife who hears that is going for an interview some, somewhere and she takes all the certificates and hide okay she hides the certificates the documents and then she will do other things like running away and leaving the children alone in the house to make sure that that man does not go anywhere or does not attend the interview anywhere or does not take a job anywhere why for selfish need of having the man around being misused and i wonder i wonder what next if you don't want your spouse to grow if you don't want your spouse to go and work then what next what are you going to eat what are you, how are you going to live without because today people have to combine effort people have to combine effort you bring something i bring something and then we are able to support the children we are able to do projects that are there to be done but if you discourage your spouse from going to work for your own selfish need because maybe you are thinking if he goes he's going to meet other ladies or if she goes she's going to meet other men that is a shallow way of thinking very shallow very shallow because man is a social being 
and you cannot uh, keep on following somebody to see what she does does not do or what he does does not do you just have to trust each other and set each other free you have to set each other free for life to be comfortable so we are saying this in unhealthy relationships there is blaming each other there is manipulation there are lies there is controlling there is undermining there is oppressing in an healthy relationship which we are calling toxic these are the things which you find there and like the other relationship that we have just uh, described where people support each other where people trust each other where people love each other where people uplift each other okay this toxic relationship we are saying it is a relationship that brings one down okay there is no good wish there is nothing there is nothing so we are asking ourselves do toxic relationships change do they change if you are in a relationship that is uh, this kind of unhealthy relationship do they change and the question is it is unlikely for such relationships to change I would be lying if I tell you that it was easy to change these kind of relationships. And this is because this is because the reasonable, harmless and honest people are easily made to believe that they are the cause of that kind of relationship. Because I'm saying they will always be bred, okay? Of everything. This toxic person We'd always blame this harmless person, this honest person, will always be blamed for things that happen inside that relationship. They are made to believe that they are not doing enough. They are made to believe that they are failures. They are made to believe that they are the cause of the relationship, unhealthy relationship, okay? the good people now. Hmm? I remember I was reading another book when I was uh, reading literature and that book is called The Beautiful Ones Are Not Yet Born. And what came out from that book is that the society that was being described in that book was a society where the righteous suffer. Yeah? It was an unhealthy society where the righteous people are the ones who suffered. Yeah? The man who refused corruption, the man who, is, uh, who refused immorality, the man who received, uh, who, who, who refused all these evils is the man who suffered in that book. And so we are saying, in an unhealthy relationship, the people who suffer are the good people or are the harmless people are the honest people because they are made to think that they are not doing enough in that relationship and so they are the cause of the way things are and they are made to believe if they could do a b c d maybe that relationship would be better okay and everything is all about what they do and what they did not do. And so harmless people, these harmless people, the honest and reasonable people, spend all their lives trying to please the toxic people. Okay? Because whatever you do is not good enough. Whatever you do is not good enough. So you keep on trying all the time. You are on your toes trying to please this person. And every time things go wrong, you are blamed. The fact is, nothing they ever do will ever be good enough. Nothing will ever change the toxic people. Nothing, and I'm saying this, nothing anyone else does will ever change these toxic people 
because they are sick in the mind. They are sick in the mind. They never see their mistakes. They, because if they saw their mistakes, if they are remorseful, if they regret what wrong they did, they would be in a position to change. But because they do not see, it becomes very difficult to change them. You try to tell them whatever they did was not right, but they do not see. They will always blame other people. It was because you said A, B, C, D, that is why I also did what I did. It is because of so and so who did A, B, C, D, that is why I did. So they will always blame other people for what they do. It is likely in this kind of relationship, my viewer, my viewer, it is very likely that there will be broken hearts, there will be broken relationships around them, and this destruction will always be explained as someone else's fault. Okay? All what will be destroyed will be, it is because someone else did A, B, C, D. There will never be regrets, as we have said, there will never be remorse. What is likely to happen is that any broken relationship will increase toxic behavior. Yes, my dear. I'm saying that every wrong done by these toxic people will be justified. Every broken heart Every broken relationship, it will be blamed on somebody else, okay? And so we are saying, everything that happens, they become hardened. These toxic people, nothing will change them. Instead, they become more hardened. Let me give you the case of Pharaoh in Egypt. When the Israelites, when God wanted to release the Israelites from Egypt, it became so difficult because whatever God did, whatever miracle that happened, it hardened the heart of Pharaoh. He was not willing to release the Israelites, okay? Until finally, you see, even when they had left, Pharaoh had to organize his soldiers, his people, to follow the Israelites until they were all finished in the sea. Yeah. So that is why we are saying that toxic relationships end up tragic. Yeah, tragic. Because these people will not change. They will continue and continue and continue until there will be a lot of destruction in this relationship in a way that there are even people who will die in this relationship. Others will be left maimed. Others will go to jail. Others will go to orphanage, like the children. If, for example, the parents kill each other, the children will go to orphanages. So that is why we are saying toxic relationship, they end up tragic. All right? But Luke chapter 1 verse that 7 says, For nothing will be impossible with God. Okay? That is why, my viewer, I keep on telling you that the Bible has the answer to all our problems. And that is why I keep on referring to the Bible. That is why I keep on referring to the Bible. Because referring you there will build your faith. And you will see that there is hope. Because you can, at the end of the day, be very, very desperate or devastated to realize that you are in a toxic relationship and there is nothing you can do about it. We are saying in Luke chapter 1, that 7, for nothing will be impossible with God. God is able and he can change them. Remember we are saying nothing another person will do can change them unless they are willing. And I keep on insisting, unless they themselves they are willing to change the goals of their lives and start planning how to achieve the new goals. 
And then we are also saying that God can intervene. Matthew 19:26 says, But Jesus looked at them and said, With the man this is impossible, but with the God all things are possible. With the God all things are possible. Where man has failed, where a human being has failed, God can do it. Yeah? So we are saying there is no need to give up. When you are in a toxic relationship, as I said the other time, you pray to God. It is good to be prayerful because the Bible says even when all the doors are closed, God leaves an open door for escape. All right? For the righteous person to escape. So there is no need to give up. I keep on saying, be prayerful, be prayerful, because prayers, a prayer of a righteous person can do great things, can achieve great things. There is no need to give up. God will give you a way. And because his ways are not our ways, the way that he's going to provide is a way that you have never even imagined. He provides ways in various style, you know, the style of God. So toxic people can only change if they are willing, that's what we have said, and with the help of God. Toxic relationships are not easily changed, but God can do that comfortably. God will give you a way. Don't ask which way, but eventually you will be out of that toxic relationship. Because God can change that person, or God can give you a way out, can give you insight on how to deal with this toxic relationship. So again we ask ourselves, why toxic people are so hard to leave? Hmm? They are not easy to leave. Once you get in a toxic relationship, it is likely that you, that you can even live in that toxic relationship the rest of your life. Not that you are not making an effort to live, you are making an effort, but it is the hardest thing to do. So, this is because if you try to leave a toxic person, things become worse. It will not be easy. The minute this person realizes that you are trying to leave him or her, things become worse. The feeling of insecurity comes in. It's like you have been made to believe that you can't do without him or her. So every time you want to leave, something brings you back. What will happen to me when I go there? When I'm alone, what will happen to me? So. What will I do without him? Maybe this person has been very good in the supplying, when it comes to supplying financially. Maybe this person is very good in, in all other ways except these evil ways of being oppressive. I remember there was a time I was talking to a lady who had been beaten so much by the husband and she was pregnant. In fact, she was lifting her clothes and showing me the pain that was inflicted to her. She had blood clothes on her body, all over her body. And she was pregnant, don't forget that. And she was beaten every night. The husband would wake up at night to beat her. And she, the husband would give a reason, a very a uh, very fake reason. Like the, the lady would wake up to go to, uh, to the loose, and then the husband would wake up and wait for her. And when she comes back, she would be beaten. Where did you go? Where did you go? Or maybe she uncovers herself at night. The husband will wake up to beat her that she has uncovered herself. 
And you wonder what kind of a reason is that? You have the right to come out and cover yourself. Do you, do you have to be beaten for you to cover yourself at night? Hmm? So, you know, simple reasons. And when I thought about this husband, there was something that was telling me maybe this husband was even abusing drugs because I don't understand what kind of reason it is that somebody wakes up in the middle of the night, goes to help herself and then comes back to be beaten. Okay? So, uh, we are saying that if you try to leave a toxic person, things become worse. Maybe one of the things that will happen is this feeling of insecurity. Because I'm saying, this lady, even after counseling her to stay away, she went back to the marriage. And when I asked her why she went back, she told me she was almost uh, giving birth. And since the man uh, provides food, it will be okay, even if she is beaten. Okay? And later on, I came to hear, even after she had given birth, she was beaten. When she was in that state of having given birth that day, and the few days that followed, even the landlord would come and try to intervene, but nothing would stop the man from beating the wife. Okay, now he's supplying, he's buying food. I don't refuse. But now you are beaten, you are almost dying, you start bleeding, you have just given birth. Is that the way to go? That is why I'm saying the feeling of insecurity. Because now you are asking yourself, when you leave, who will be supplying for you? Okay? So I'm saying, the toxic behavior multiplies. The once this person knows that you, are, you want to leave, the toxic behavior multiplies okay the lies multiply the manipulation multiply criticisms multiply if there was any beating it multiplies if there were abuses that were going on in that marriage or that relationship it multiplies okay and yet you are feeling that you don't know how you are going to live you are asking yourself, how will I be this person? So, all this kind of behavior makes the other person feel helpless. It makes the other person feel useless. It makes the other person feel incapacitated. It makes the other person feel unworthy living. And that is why, my viewer, many people who have been in uh, these toxic relationships, they end up even taking their lives. That is why I keep on saying, the toxic relationships, unless God intervenes and gives a way out, they end up tragic. Yeah, they don't end up well. Because what I said the other time was that, in a normal relationship, there are issues. There is no relationship that is 100%. Even if people love each other so much, there is something that comes up once in a while. But people will always come together, they forgive, they pray together, and they move on, and they move on. And life continues, because life is a cycle. Life is a cycle. You move on, you keep on moving on. But in this toxic relationship, because of the things that are done there, the evil deeds of the unhealthy person, these relationships do not end up well. Okay? Uh, because they, this will be an effort, whatever they do, will be an effort to make the good person do more in the relationship. And that is why I've said the, the harmless person will live the rest of his life or her life trying to please this unhealthy person. Because they will always do things in an effort to make you offer more support, in an effort to make you more loving to them, 
in an effort to make you more kind, more humble to them, so that they can be able to contain you, okay, in a box, so that they can be able to oppress you. So they will always do things to, uh, to make sure that you remain in the relationship. So we are saying that breaking away from toxic relationships is very painful, my dear viewer. It is very, very painful because maybe even by the time you leave, by the time a way is found, you will somehow be mentally destroyed. You will have become unhealthy, even you yourself, mentally unhealthy. You entered into this relationship when you are a strong person, so loving, so kind. But by the time you end up, you even don't know what those qualities are. There is no flexibility in such relationships. Even a family that has this toxic relationship, there is no flexibility, there is no bending, there is no room for growth. Yeah? Because the toxic people will make you believe that they are doing what they are doing because they love you. Can you imagine, my viewer, can you imagine somebody who is so nasty to you, somebody who is so unreasonable, somebody who is so hurting, who is so oppressive to you? And this person will always tell you, whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it for your sake. I'm doing it because I love you. Like even following you wherever you go to your working place, following you there to come and spy whether you are speaking with another woman or whether you are speaking with another man, if you are a woman. They will tell you that they are doing it because they love you. Do you believe in that kind of love? Hmm? Saying that they are doing whatever they, they are doing because they love you? And they will even justify what they are doing. They will tell you that whatever they are doing is not a big deal. It's not a big deal. You are the one who is making things worse. For example, they will tell you that you are so sensitive. Hmm? Even what I'm doing is not bad. What I'm doing, I'm doing because of love for you. It is you who is so sensitive. They will tell you that. That it is you who is too serious. You are too serious in life. You are taking things so seriously in life. Otherwise, what I'm doing is not anything uh, to worry you. They will tell you that even they will tell you you are so stupid. Yeah? They will tell you it is you who do not understand what I'm doing because you are so stupid. You are too, too useless. You are too needy. Yeah? You are too generous. You are hot tempered. You are unfair. You are unapproachable. You will be labeled all these things, my viewer. Imagine. Just imagine. You will be labeled now the good man. You remember? I told you of the beautiful ones are not yet born. That book where now you find the, the it's a society where the righteous suffer. Now you who is now uh, you are held in mind and you are trying to reason out and saying these things should not be doing done this way. These things should not be done this way. This is not, not the right thing, the right way of doing things. You are the one who will be labeled stupid. You are the one who will be labeled unreasonable. You are the one who will be labeled everything, everything that I've just mentioned here. Hmm? But I'm saying this, my viewer. I'm saying if a relationship hurts, it hurts. No more, no less. If a relationship hurts, do not imagine that it's not hurting. Do not even imagine that there are things that you will do to make it not hurt. If it is hurting, it is hurting. And it is good to be realistic in relationships, okay? Love never hold people back.
from their growth. Yeah? My viewer, that person who is telling you that he is doing whatever he is doing because he loves you, or she is doing whatever she is doing because she loves you, coming even into your working place to check that book, eh? that book, guest's book, to check how many ladies have uh, registered there that they visited that office. And then the person will keep on asking you, how come your office is only visited by ladies? Or if, if it's a man, if, if it's a man, we'll ask the lady, how come your office is only visited by men? That person telling you that he or she is doing it because of love, that is not love. And I'll tell you today, Anybody who visits your office, your working place, to come and harass the other gender there, that is not love. But now, the worst part is when now they say that they are doing it because they love you. And I'll tell you today, love never holds you back from your growth. Because now, if you are doing your best to grow professionally, and then somebody is coming from home, to come and visit your office and harass one gender, you cannot grow with one gender there. Love does not diminish anything or anybody who makes you feel very small. That is not love. Okay? And remember I'm talking about any kind of a relationship. It may be in marriage, it may be friendship, it may be colleagues at work. Remember when I talk of relationships, I'm talking about relationships at whatever level. And I'm saying <clears throat> a relationship that will make you feel small, there is no love there. Then I'm saying that love does not contaminate. That every time you wake up, you will leave that house when you are contaminated. Or every time you meet that so-called friend, you will leave that place feeling contaminated. Love does not do that. Love is not harmful. Love is not destructive. Love does not beat, my friend. <laughs> if you are beaten in that relationship, then there is no love there. <laughs> I, I tried to, there was a time I went for research and I was talking to elder ladies and I was surprised this lady is telling me that they used to be beaten by their husbands and when they are beaten is when they knew that they were loved <laughs> and they were also suggesting that women should be beaten a bit to be shown that they are loved uh, kuna, i said no there is no love there he love does not beat love does not kill will somebody come and kill you beat you until you are dead and then somebody will say I did it for love yeah because I'll see I have seen people speaking from jail and they are saying that they loved their wives so much and they ended up killing those wives hmm? what kind of love is that tell me my viewer is there love what I know what I know as a Christian is that Jesus died for all of us. And he died once and for all. No one else is supposed to die for the other one. Alright? That you die now because somebody loves you, comes and kills you. I don't support that. Jesus died for us, all of us. And if we believe in him and follow his footsteps, then these issues of love or no love would not be there. They wouldn't be there. So we are saying love is supportive. Love is nourishing. Love feels loved. Yeah, my viewer. Where there is love, you feel loved. Where there is love, there is sweetness. Mm? There is sweetness of the soul. Love brings sweetness of the soul. Where there is love, there is soothing. Okay? That feeling of soothing, that when you speak with this person who loves you, 
who loves him. Even there was a, a, a musician who sang, I want to be with somebody, with somebody who loves me. It is love is manageable. Okay? There is that sweetness. There is that soothing. Hmm? My viewer, love is uplifting. There is no person who will tell me that he loves me or she loves me and then oppresses you until you feel you are useless. Love is uplifting. Okay? Even at work, when you are dealing with colleagues there, you will be able to see who loves me, who does not. Because the person who does not love you, every time you come and share about your success, these people are not happy. If you come and share of something that you want to do, they will tell you you can't make it. They are always discouraging. But anybody who tells you, don't worry, things will work out, you will make it, you know, these are the words that uplift and they make you move forward with the strength. They give you strength. Even when you are feeling like giving up, you won't give up. With these people around you, you won't. They will tell you, keep on keeping on. Things will be okay. Okay? Love is healing. Mm? Where there is love, even when you are so hurting, when you meet somebody, who has love, somebody who is loving, that person will make you feel like you are already healed. The words, they are life-giving, my viewer. The words of somebody who loves, they are life-giving. Where there was life, where there was no life, there. Now there is life because a loving person has come in, has spoken good words of love that we have said. They bring sweetness, they bring soothing, they bring uplifting, they bring healing, they give life. Okay? So, we have been saying that toxic relationships, they end up tragic. If there was all these, all these qualities were there, then we wouldn't have people uh, dying. And I'm saying this, and I'll say this, my viewer, I will say this. If love does not do all those things that we have said, then it is not love. <laughs> it is not love. Yeah, if it does not do what we have said, then it is not love. And we are saying follow your heart for your happiness matters a lot. Follow your heart. If you are not happy, I've just said, if it is hurting, it is hurting. Don't pretend that it is not hurting. So it is good that you follow your heart. Whatever you decide to do, it should be done with a lot of love. Remember we said these toxic people are our brothers and our sisters. They are our parents. They are our friends. They are colleagues at work. These people are everywhere. And we cannot run away from them. So we are saying this. Whether it is separation, whether it is seeking solution from anywhere, the door should be left open. Do not close that door. In the case there is genuine repentance and change, because we have said change is possible. If they are willing to change, and if God intervenes, that's what we have said. So if you are deciding to separate with that person that you love, because the person is, uh, you have realized you are in a healthy relationship, whatever you decide to do, whether it is separation, whether it is divorce, whether it is seeking solution, everything should be done with a lot of love. Because, my viewer, I have just said, with God, all things are possible. There are even people who separate, like in marriage, for example, and they let alone after some years, they come back and renew their vows. Why? Because 
God has done something. Because they desired to change. They also prayed to God to change them. They changed. They came back. Yes. So there is a, the door should be left open. Set the boundaries with the grace and love. Leave the toxic person to decide which way to go. The boundaries have to be set. Okay? Because at the end of the day, the boundaries are not about hatred, my viewer. The boundaries are not about hatred. They are not about adding relationship. It is not about manipulation. It is about strength and courage to put things right. Things have to be put right in that relationship. But we are saying this. Whatever you decide to do in this relationship, you have to do it with a lot of love, with a lot of grace. Ne maya mungu, ne maya mungu. The grace of God that is sufficient in all circumstances. You have to pray for strength. You have to pray for courage to put things right. Because things have to be put right. For example, if it is a marriage, before you kill each other and leave those children in orphanage, before you kill each other and end up in jail, before you, you beat each other, you, you hurt each other until you, le you leave each other maimed, things have to be put right. Okay? And if this relationship will end, my viewer, it is not because of uh, lack of love, of loyalty. It is because the toxic person chose not to treat you in the way you deserve. And it is their choice at the end of the day. Once you set the boundaries, it is their choice. The choice of that toxic person to either go by the boundaries and the conditions or stay away. You have the right to choose which person stays close to you and which person does not stay close to you. Let someone choose whether he or she will want to be part of your life. Yeah. People have to decide to respect those conditions, but in the meanwhile, you have to stay away. Okay? If they choose not to respect the boundaries you set for yourself, then they can stay away. They have the choice. They have the choice. Because why God, why has God given us the brain? And why has God said that you cultivate peace, live in peace with all men? Why God has? Why? It is because peace is very important. And it is good that people live in a healthy relationship. Now, if your work is to cultivate peace and the other person's work is to destroy this peace, do you think this now can go away? They have to be told things are not right and they have to be given an opportunity to change. All right? The, like I'm saying this, get me right, my viewer. Because there are some people who will go now and they start planning divorce, start planning uh, separation because I've spoken about this. Get me right. What I'm saying is this. This does not mean you are excluding these people from your life. You cannot exclude them from your life because you are your sisters, your brothers. All you are doing is to set boundaries for your own peace of mind. For your own peace of mind. And they will know if they want to come close to you, then they have to, to respect those boundaries. Toxic people, my friend, also have their own conditions which they give for you to be in their lives. They also have their own conditions. Just as we are saying that you also set your own boundaries, they also have their own conditions that they will give you. And I will tell you so that you know whether you would give in to these conditions or not. 
some of the conditions that they will include is that you should be able to tolerate lying because these toxic people are liars so for you to be in their lives you should be the good person who tolerates lies every time they come they lie you they are in kisumu you come to learn they were in Mombasa. all right they lie to you they have done this you come to discover it is just opposite of what they said and you live with it you live with it for you to be in that relationship the other thing condition that they give is that you should tolerate manipulation hmm? it will be your choice whether you will tolerate manipulation okay so that you are twisted this way you are twisted that way and at the end of the day you even don't know who you are <laughs> maybe you will even by the time they finish up with you you will have even forgotten your name <laughs> so <laughs> so we are saying that it is for you to know again judgment you should tolerate judgment in, in your life so that you are judged today you are told you are prostitute tomorrow you are told you are what judgment judgment they, because these people are very judgmental criticisms always they will never see anything good in you everything you do is bad criticism oppression oppression and whatever else they have whatever bad thing they come with you should tolerate so we are saying that no relationship is worth such things yeah you should say no to anything that dehumanizes you and demoralizes you my dear viewer eh? as i go to end this topic i'm saying that you should be able to say no to anything that dehumanizes you and demoralizes you you are made in the image of god and i said that the other time no more no less you are a child of the king of kings and the lord of lords why should somebody dehumanize you eh? i'm saying stay away from such whatever thing whatever person even if it's a member of the family anybody who will demoralize and dehumanize you put a boundary for your own peace of mind they have not loved the person you are but they have loved another version of you let them know that and in conclusion i'm saying do to others what you would like them to do to you respect the boundaries and live in peace with all men all right we are saying cultivate peace cultivate peace and God will bless you. You cultivate peace. If you do not like something done to you, do not do it to other people. Okay? Try to find peace. If you think you are fallen in the category of those people have described as toxic, pray to God. Pray to God. God is able. He was, if he was able to change Saul, who was persecuting Christians, and he changed, and he started serving God, God can also fix you. God can fix you. If you know you are toxic, if you know you have broken hearts, if you know you have destroyed the lives of people, pray to God, and God will change you. And if you are in that kind of a relationship, set boundaries. That's what I've said, with a lot of love, with a lot of grace and of course leave a room in the case there is genuine repentance and genuine reconciliation. So uh, viewers, we come to the end of our topic today and now I want to bring you before God so that we can, uh, God can bless us. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we come before your throne of grace we thank you father for your love we thank you for your care we thank you jehovah because you do care about us 
we thank you because even when all the doors are closed, you leave one door open for your righteous people to escape. So Jehovah God, we are praying that from this day you are going to give us new insight. You are going to speak to us in a very special way. Wherever we are, whatever we are, whatever we are doing, we pray that you are going to speak to us in a very special way. That Father, you are going to give us insight. That Father, if you are living in toxic relationships, God Almighty, you are going to give us a way out. We know that all what is not possible with the men are possible with you, God. And as we leave this place today, we believe that you are going to visit those people who are suffering as a result of being in healthy relationships. You are going to rescue them, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of them have even become sick. They have depression. They have ulcers. They have every kind of disease because of the torture they are receiving from their unhealthy relationships. We are praying that you are going to rescue them and give them a way out in the name of Jesus. And for those who are suffering various diseases, Lord, we are praying that you may heal them because no disease is greater than you, O oh God. And for those who are having broken marriages, we pray that you are going to reconcile them. Speak to them with your word, O oh God. Just speak to them in a voice that they can hear, O oh God. Let them see sense. Let them have genuine repentance. Let them have reconciliation in the name of Jesus. And for those children who are also in unhealthy relationships, we pray that you may give them strength, Jehovah. Protect them in the name of Jesus. And as we live today, we pray that you be with us until next time. For all this we pray and trust in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So till next time. Uh, may God bless you.